Hi everyone, welcome to the third lecture of the series Control of Power Electronic Converters. In this lecture, we will discuss the modeling of rectifiers and inverters. Here is the overview. We start with a brief introduction to rectifiers and inverters, then we move on to the modeling. Rectifiers are power electronic circuits that converts AC to DC. Here we are considering controlled rectifiers in which the magnitude of the output voltage and current can be adjusted by controlling the switch position. Rectifiers can also be uncontrolled as well, which uses diodes as the switches. Similarly, we have inverters which are DC to AC converters and converts DC input to AC output. The basic idea of rectifiers and inverters can be represented as in figure 1. In general, the rectifier and inverter circuits are mostly constructed from the full bridge circuit. Basically, the full bridge converter can be either used as a DC to DC converter or inverter based on the switching. Also, it can be used as a rectifier by reversing the switch polarity. Similar to the DC to DC converters, rectifiers and inverters can be mathematically represented using the following models, which are switch system model, state space average model, and linear racer model. In this lecture, we will be focusing on the derivation of switch system models for rectifiers and inverters from which the other two models can be derived in a similar way as discussed in the last lecture. We start with the modeling of the rectifiers in which we consider a three-phase controlled rectifier as shown in figure 2. Here, this part of the circuit is the rectifier part and we have an output LC filter which is similar as in the full bridge converter and buck converter. Here, at a time, only two legs of the bridge is active which means one leg is inactive in which both the switches will be off. And in the remaining two legs, one switch will be on and the other will be off. The switch configuration in the rectifier decides the input voltage across this LC circuit. Based on that, we can have an equivalent circuit of the rectifier as in figure 2b, in which VPQ denotes the phase to phase voltage between phase P and Q. For example, if S1 and S5 are on and all the remaining switches are off, then this LC circuit will be connected across phase 1 and 2. So VPQ equals V12. Now for this generalized circuit, we can derive the state equation similar as in buck converter. We have the equivalent circuit of the rectifier is similar to the mode 1 for buck converter with VPQ instead of V in. Therefore, the state equation for the equivalent circuit is obtained as in equation number 1, which is similar to the buck converter with VPQ appear instead of V. Then, by considering all possible switch configurations, we can obtain the switch system model of the rectifier as in equation number 2, which is the subsystems and the corresponding switching configuration as given below. Here we can observe that the A matrix is same for all the subsystem and only the B matrix changes. It changes with the equivalent input voltage. Similar to the DC to DC converters, the rectifiers can also be modeled as an LTA system with switching inputs. In the rectifiers, we also have the possibility of both the switches in a leg off at a time. Therefore, here a switching variable with three values is used to represent the switching action for each leg, which are defined as in equation number 4. So here, if both the switches are off, we denote the switching variable by 0. And if one switch is on and other is off, then it can take either plus 1 or minus 1. Now, by defining the continuous time state vector like this and the switching input like this, we can represent the rectifier as an LTA system as in equation number 5 with A and B matrix as in equation number 6. Next, we move on to the modeling of inverters. We consider a three-phase inverter for which the circuit diagram is given in figure 3a. Here, at a time, one switch in each leg is on, based on which the points 1, 2 and 3 will be connected to either plus V in or 0 volts. For example, if S4, S5 and S3 are on, then phase 1 and 2 will be connected to the ground and phase 3 will be connected to plus V, which results in an equivalent circuit as in figure 3B, where Z is the equivalent impedance of each phase. 
we denote this as mode 1 of the inverter. Here we have three legs for the inverter and each leg can have two switching possibilities. Hence, there will be total eight switching configurations out of which the switches S1, S2 and S3 are all on and S1, S2, S3 are all off are excluded. So there will be total six switching configuration which results in six modes. Now for each phase, we have the equivalent circuit as in figure 3C in which VPN and IP denotes the phase voltage and current for the phase P. Similarly, IOP and ISODOP denotes the output current and output impedance respectively. For example, from figure 3B, we can compute the phase voltages V1N, V2N and V3N by applying voltage division. So here these two impedances are parallel. So the equivalent impedance will be Z by 2. Then by voltage division, we have V3N is equal to V in into Z by Z plus Z by 2. So this gives V3N equal to 2 by 3 V. And in a similar way, we have V1N and V2N equal to minus V in into Z by 2 plus Z by Z by 2, which is equal to minus 1 by 3 V. So here the equivalent circuit for phase P is similar to the buck converter circuit. Therefore, by applying KCL and KVL, then rearranging the equations results in equation number 8. Now, by combining the equations for all the phases, we obtain the state equation for mode 1 as in equation number 9. Here for phase 1 and 2, we have VPN equal to minus 1 by 3 V in. So this term becomes minus V in by 3 L. And for phase 3, we have VPN equal to 2 by 3 V in. So this term becomes 2 V in by 3 L. In a similar way, we can derive the state equation for other modes as well. Now, by defining the state vector like this, we obtain the switch system model of the inverter as in equation number 10 with six subsystems which are shown as here. Note that for each subsystem, only the B matrix changes. It changes with the phase voltage VPN. Next, we move on to the switching input model of the inverter in which we use a binary switching variable for each leg to represent the switching action and is defined as in equation number 11. Now, using the switching variables, the phase voltages V1N, V2N, V3N can be represented in terms of the input voltage V in as in equation number 12. Note that here for mode 1, we have S4, S5 and S3 are on. So S1 equal to 0, S2 equal to 0 and S3 equal to 1. And we have the switching vector as 0, 0, 1, which is the binary equivalent of 1. Similarly for mode 2, we have S4, S2 and S6 are on, which gives S1 equal to 0, S2 equal to 1 and S3 equal to 0. And the switching vector becomes 0, 1, 0, which is the binary equivalent of 2. And this holds up to mode 6. In fact, we can name the modes arbitrary, but naming the modes like this helps in remembering the switching pattern. Now by defining the state vector and the output current vector and the switching input like this, we obtain the state equation for the inverter as in equation number 30, in which A, B and B O are given here. Note that this is equivalent to the switcher system model with B sigma is split into B U S plus B O I O. That completes the modeling part of power converters and in the upcoming lectures, we will be discussing the analysis and controller design for converters. That completes this lecture. Thanks for listening.